Hey, what's good everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Alchemy. Today we're going to be talking about Bitwig's keyboard shortcuts that I like to use to make my workflow extremely fast and efficient. Now, if you're just beginning, then, you know, sometimes getting familiar with these can be a huge learning curve because you got to memorize a bunch of stuff. But Bitwig is so awesome because you are actually able to make your own custom keyboard shortcuts provided that you know what function you have. So what I want to do is kind of walk through some of this stuff with you. And there's about 11 of these main things that I have that might help you out. So with that out of the way, one thing that I would say is, hey, if you like my content, then do me a favor and like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. You can check out all my resources, um, both free and paid at alchemy.com or consider becoming a member. We also have a link to the Discord in the link tree down below. So with that being said, let's talk about the most useful function that I personally use, which is this guy. The open bracket that I have is scale 50%. And uh, what's really cool is if you right click this, you can see what keyboard shortcuts they are. It's not exclusive to Bitwig, it's just nice in any program, but scale 50% basically takes a sample or even MIDI and time stretches it to half. And then likewise, if I do close bracket, as you can see here, this will actually double this. This is extremely useful because in some cases you might be trying to change something to either fit within a particular rhythm or time. The other thing is that if you have this set to repitch mode and you do either 50%, that'll go up an octave. If you do it double, it'll actually go down an octave. We still don't have a pitch remapping thing or like a pitch mode in repitch or unwarp samples, but this is a nice middle ground in between. The second thing is actually taking a page out of Ableton. So if I hit Command T, then this will create a new audio track. Bitwig by default does the opposite. So if I hit Shift Command T, then that will create a new MIDI track. So I just went back. Um, I came from Ableton. I've been using it for frick uh, 10 years now, and I'm just used to utilizing that. So that's my preference. But even still, it's not the end of the world. I just prefer to keep things that way. There's another thing that I have, which is shift or sorry, option command S. And what's nice about this one is this is my slice in place. So if I go option command S like this, you'll see that this is a slice in place option to where we can utilize this to uh, basically slice things very quickly and efficiently. And again, you can always right click this stuff. And for whatever reason, if you don't like to actually utilize your keyboard shortcuts, you can actually paste some of these via clip where you want them to. So for example, if I want to go normalize, which is normally set, this is one of them, by the way, to shift in, I can just hit this guy right here. And now, can you see that through here? Yeah, so this will just be normalization on any clip that I have, which is a very nice kind of like secondary shortcut, if you will. So um, the thing after that that we have is actually activation. And I've got a couple of these. So if I hit Alt A, that will activate and deactivate the clip. This also works on tracks. And then as far as devices go, if I hit zero, that'll turn devices on and off, which is another thing from Bitwig, but this doesn't have the same, uh, sorry, another thing from Ableton, but it's not quite the same if we do that here. So you have to hit Command or Alt A for this, and then you can toggle uh, different devices on and off with zero. So the next one is actually pretty useful. If I hit Control B, I'm on a Mac, so that's gonna be something different for you. But if I hit Control B, this will actually hide or show the browser. And if this is clicked here, then I can actually kind of do a pseudo version of Command F if you're used to Ableton to where I can go like this, go kick, find a kick. That's a terrible kick. And I can go Command B, hide it, continue working, Command B, uh, click back here, which is still kind of a hassle. But even still, it's kind of nice to be able to kind of move that window on and off. Um, if I go... Command B, this would be bounce in place. And so the thing that is most important to remember about bounce in place isn't even whether or not it keeps it on the same track. It's more so understanding that for the most part, this is going to bounce pre effects. So let's say I've got my Pro Q, my beam, and a fuse compressor on this. If I go Command B, it's not going to print with the effects. However, if I go J and I go to, um, let's go Post Fader, if I hit J now, then what this is going to do is print this to a new track, leave the original alone, and it's going to have all of the effects kind of cooked into it. And that's probably a reason why I use the two. To be honest with you, though, because I have Rolling Sampler, I almost never use J anymore unless if it's like a very specific use case, because normally, especially with things that are alive, say randomizers, LFOs, multi-stage envelopes, blah, 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 
sometimes you're going to get something different and sometimes I play something or I hear something that I want it exactly so I'll just pull it from rolling sampler and drag it out but if you don't have rolling sampler that's a great way to kind of get that kind of stuff back um, there is one more that I think is important or maybe we can look at a couple of other things that might be useful to you so for example if you're wanting to uh, make a new like slice to drums these different things are really important so slice to drum machine command alt D or slice to multi sample command alt M so if I right click this and go command alt M then this will actually create a multi sample and will break this up into different things which is pretty convenient and then for some reason I think that maybe it was because I was on a beta or something but if I hit command alt D yeah that seems to not give me that even though that's what it's shaped to so let me double check for some reason uh, command alt D yeah so if I hit command alt D it just does nothing unfortunately and maybe that's because this is a different thing that pulls up that but we can still set that to something different perhaps like shift option D or something and then you can diversify that to just a single drum rack or so so with that being said, it's generally the most common practices that I utilize for keyboard shortcuts. And if you have any that you really enjoy, I would love to know that might be super efficient. Um, yeah, it really mastering just a few simple, I guess, uh, commands like this can really speed up your workflow, especially if you have an audio based workflow like I do, which, you know, I try to get everything down to audio as quickly as possible. But yeah, oh, one quick one, if you go shift command M, on a region that'll double click or if you double click that'll create a new thing but I also think that if you go shift command M within a selected region maybe not maybe option command M no uh, shift option M I feel like one of these um, in the same way that you normally would with Ableton control option M no so none of those work but yeah I guess you can just double click and create a clip like that if you want to um, surely there's a keyboard shortcut for that so get in there figure out what you know different use cases you like to do maybe quantize or something or I think shift command Q I have for quantize nope uh, shift option Q option Q maybe option Q yeah so option Q is quantize I think that's a default one though so yeah other than that that's pretty much all I use so anyways if this was helpful to you let me know thanks so much and I will see you in the next one